In this problem, we are adding decimals. When you're adding decimals, the important thing is to line up all the decimals. So we have 1.28, put the decimal right here. 0 0.003, put the decimal in the same spot, just move down. Same thing here, 0.359. When you're adding or subtracting decimals, the decimals all line up vertically like that, with all the ones in the question and your answer. And then we can just add. 3 plus 9 is 12. Always start at the right side when you're adding these things together because a lot of time you'll need to carry a 1. 1 plus 8 is 9, plus 5 is 14. Put the 4 down, carry the 1. 1 plus 2 is 3, plus 0 is 3, plus 3 is 6. Don't, didn't need to carry anything that time. 1 plus nothing is 1. And that is our answer, 1.642. When you are multiplying decimals, you will multiply like usual for most of the steps. You don't need to line the decimals up when you're multiplying, but you will need to do something at the end. So we just multiply like usual. 8 times 6 is 48. Carry the 4. 8 times 5 is 40, plus that 4 is 44. Put a 4 down, carry the 40. 8 times 9 is 72 plus 4 is 76, and then on to the 5. 5 times 6 is 30, put the 0 down, carry the 3. 5 times 5 is 25, add 3 to that to get 28, put the 8 down, carry the 2. 5 times 9 is 45, plus 2 is 47. Then we add up like usual, 8 and nothing is 8, 4 plus 0 is 4, 6 plus 8 is 14, put a 4 down, carry the 1. 1 plus 7 is 8, plus 7 is 15, put a 5 down, carry the 1. 1 plus 4 is 5. And now we do the decimal part. For this we need to count up how many decimal places we had in the starting two pieces. 9.56 had two decimal places. 5.8 had one decimal place for a total of three decimal places. That just means that our answer needs three decimal places. Our answer is 55.448. To turn a fraction into a decimal, you need to perform the long division. Here we have 9 divided by 20. That looks like this. So how many times does 20 go into 9? None at all. And since we've run out of the usual places, we need to add a decimal. And those line up vertically and add an extra zero. How many times does 20 go into 90? It goes in four times. 20 times 4 is 80. 90 minus 80 is 10. And we still have things left, so we add another zero. Bring it down. How many times does 20 go into 100? It goes in 5 times. 20 times 5 is 100. And now all of that cancels out. We have a 0 there, and we are done. Our answer is 0 0.45. That is the decimal form of 9 twentieths. In problem 4, we are comparing decimals to see which of these is the least. When you're comparing to see who's the least or who's the greatest, you start at the left side. So at the left side we have 0, 0, 0, and 0. They're all tied, so we just move on to the next decimal place. Next we have 0, 0, 4, and 0. So these three are tied for least, A, B, and D. And C can't be it. 4 is too big. So then we go to the next place. We have 9, 4, and 4. Who's the least of those? The 4, which means it can't be the 9. And then we just go to the next place, which is the least, 2 or 3, 2. Our answer is D. All of the following equal 40% of R, except which of these? Well, first of all, let's just find a single way to write 40% of R. 40 is 40. Percent means divide by 100. It's Latin for out of 100. The word of means multiply. 
that doesn't make sense, think about a real world example. If I give you two of these $20 bills, how much money did I give you? Two times 20. And R is the letter R. So we've got 40R over 100. And you can just write that all as one fraction. A times R is like a times R over 1. And that is 40R over 100, which is this answer here. So we've just figured out that this does equal 40% of R. And now let's see what else it could equal. What if we reduce this 40 over 100? Well, let's see, 40 over 100. They have zeros at the end, so they both divide by 10. Divide by 10, divide by 10. 40 divided by 10 is 4. The R is still there. 100 divided by 10 is 10. And then we can keep going. 4 and 10 are both even, so they will both divide by 2. That gives us 2R over 5, which is answer C here. And then what about changing it to a decimal? Anytime that you're dividing by 100, you can just take your top part and move the decimal twice to the left, once for each zero down there. 40 divided, divided by 100 is just 0.4, or 0.40. So 40 divided by 100 is 0.40, and if you have the R there, you still have the R there. So this 0.40R is another way to say 40% of R, which means our answer has to be this one here, 40R. That just means 40 of R, not 40% of R. When this problem says which is closest, that's a hint that you're allowed to round. So let's round 9.8. 9.8, because that 8 is a big number, if it's 5 or bigger, that means we'll round up to the next whole number, which after 9 comes 10. 9.8 is pretty close to 10. And 10 is a really, really convenient number to multiply by. So we can, either, can just keep this one how it is, and the multiplying will still go very quickly. 0 times anything is 0. 1 times anything is the anything. Adding is pretty quick. And then how many decimal places did this multiplication start with? It had one. We need one decimal place at the end. And this is approximately 476. So 476 is closest to 480. And that is our answer. Now you want to be careful here, because if you rounded too much, if you had rounded 47.6 all the way to 50, if you'd rounded it to the, to the tens, then you would have gotten 500, that would have been wrong. If you, don't, if you want to be completely certain that you don't make a mistake, you could just multiply out the original numbers, that wouldn't be too difficult. It turns out that if you did multiply the originals, you would get 466.08, which is still closest to 480. If a sports team wins 90% of 90 games, how many games is that? Well, let's remember. Percent means divide by 100. And dividing by 100, you can just move the decimal twice, so that's 0.90. Of means multiply. And 90 is 90. So we just have to multiply 0.90 by 90. Zero times zero is zero, zero times nine is zero, and then nine times zero is zero, nine times nine is 81. Add. And how many decimal places did we start with? We started with two decimal places, so we need to put two decimal places on our answer. So we have 81.00. You don't need zeros after a decimal, so that's just 81. If you win 90% of 90 games, that is 81 victories. If Alice does one third of a project and Bob does one fourth, how much does Charlie need to do? Well, we start with one entire project, and we need to subtract how much Alice has done, and how much Bob has done, and that will leave how much Charlie needs to do. So the first step in adding and subtracting fractions is to get a common denominator. 
for over 3 and over 4, that common denominator will be 12. 12 divides by 3 and 12 divides by 4. So 1 or 1 over 1, if I need to make that something over 12, I'll multiply by 12. 12 times 1 is 12. And 12 times 1 is 12. How do I turn over 3 to over 12? What do I need to multiply by? I need to multiply by 4. 3 times 4 is 12, and 1 times 4 is 4. If I need to turn 1 over 4 into something over 12, I need to multiply by 3. 3 times 4 will be 12, and 3 times 1 will be 3. And then I can just subtract. When it's all addition and subtraction, you work left to right. 12 twelfths minus 4 twelfths. They're the same denominator, so what's 12 minus 4? It is 8. That gives me 8 twelfths. And I still have the minus 3 twelfths. I haven't dealt with that yet. And then again, they're both over 12. So what is 8 minus 3? That is 5. Answer is still over 12. You keep that common denominator when you add or subtract fractions. And that is how much of the project, project Charlie needs to do. 5 twelfths of it.